Good morning, April 5th, 2023. Time to replace these invasive plants with some pollinator friendly plants and do a little mercy mission. Today, I specifically chose native California blue blossom, also known as California lilac. And I chose it because the neighborhood surrounding this open space area has unfortunately done some what I call deathscaping and in this case they actually killed native plants blue blossoms sometimes just cutting the branches back and in other cases actually killing the entire plant this is a recurring theme that I try not to talk about too much but it really bothers me how we've decided that we prefer barren soil over having ground cover and hiding places and nesting places for birds, flowers for our native pollinators, seeds for the birds after the flowering takes place. This is what blue blossom in another part of the neighborhood where they didn't butcher it looks like. Honestly, at this stage, it should be illegal to chop down plants like this and replace it with death. So today I'm trying to compensate for that deathscaping by putting blue blossom out here in the wild and actually adding two blue blossoms to a yard in the neighborhood that I care for. It's really unfortunate that in California it's hard to find native plants in stock when you go to stores like Lowe's or Home Depot, pretty much anywhere that carries plants for you know, decorating, for gardening, for landscaping. The positive thing here is that you can find California lilac at places like Home Depot and Lowe's. And they're not, uh, they're not particularly expensive. So for anyone wanting to do a little good without having to hunt for a rare native plant nursery in California, go get some lilac it's a uh, tough plant it's uh, fairly friendly for brown thumbs and it's beneficial to wildlife like most california natives it's drought tolerant it's attractive also you can see that even though this is a decent sized plant uh, the surrounding non-native annual european grasses are already taller than it so I'm giving this thing some breathing room by ripping them out, taking the soil off of them, and replanting it with the soil. Unfortunately, some damage occurred during the transfer process. I still don't have the best bag for transporting big plants. It was a little too awkward to film, um, but what I couldn't show you is a little bit of advice for anyone who tries planting, if you don't already know this. After you put it in and you've made the hole, you got to make sure to bring the soil in and push it down around the edges because there's a lot of air space that you don't notice at first. And roots don't usually want that much air space. They want soil to work with. That's not to say pack it to where the roots have a different type of challenge, but uh, they definitely want soil and not great big hollow spaces. <laughs> you sure are encountering the turkeys over here a lot. We'll go this way. Don't want to bug them. Can I just point out how good these two are? Not chasing the wildlife. Day two of the blue blossom, also known as California lilac. This is going to be gorgeous. Day three for the blue blossom. Oh my gosh, and we already have a big bumblebee out here interacting. That makes me really happy.
I was just contemplating doing an episode that asks why I'm seeing more bees in the urban neighborhood than I'm seeing out here in the wild. And I gotta say that the most obvious answer is that the wild, as we call it, is dominated by these non-natives that don't uh, flower like the grasses, the agricultural grasses. Right now I'm watching a bee dancing around in between all these grasses and there's nothing for it. Another reason is that uh, we have so much rosemary in the neighborhoods. And I'm thankful for people planting something that the pollinators can make any sort of use of compared to making no use. But I can't help but wonder if the bees being so attracted to the rosemary doesn't cause a different problem. You know what I mean? Okay, I wanted to share one last detail. Because of the slant of the hill, I didn't want these branches to rot with their contact with the ground. So I grabbed a supporting stick and it is allowing there to be airflow down here instead of it laying on the ground like it was. It's a beautiful plant. I hope it does well. Got to enjoy these moments while we can because it won't be long before the very same plants she's sitting in will pose a serious threat to her. All plants that aren't even supposed to be here. <laughs>